Face here back with another reaction video. This time we're reacting to the second episode of the Cuban Missile Crisis series by um, Time Ghost History. And the title of this one is Kennedy, the Lying Politician. Well, all politicians are liars and untrustworthy, so, so there's not much surprise there, even though I don't. If they're talking about uh, John F. Kennedy, well. I saw, I just recently saw a documentary on TV about the Kennedys, how, how much, you know, they're not, they're just like all other politicians, they, they're not that caring, especially, especially, uh, they would happily abandon their children if it meant saving face, so, typical politicians, anyway, sorry about that little rant, that was probably uncalled for, but, oh well, I don't. I'm not very I'm not very trusting of politicians as it is, but anyway. But it's a pleasant surprise when I found out when I reacted to the first episode last week. If you haven't checked out checked that reaction out, please check that out before checking this one out. Um that this is hosted by Indy Nidell, which is which I like Indy Nidell because he's a great presenter when it comes to historical content on YouTube and um because before this, the last I've seen him was um on the great on the Great War Channel, you know, talking about you know all this as uh, talking about a load of the subjects based on World War One. I. I know. I haven't saying that I haven't checked out the Great War Channel for a while since they've moved to World War Two. So um, I've got to check them out back at some point. Um. But yeah. The usual disclaimer when I react to anything historical, if I don't give so much of a proper reaction, it's probably obvious that uh, I don't know much on the subject. When it, like the Cuban Missile Crisis, I definitely don't have much knowledge on it. So, what little I do know about the Cuban Missile Crisis is about, like you know, Cuba inviting the Soviet Red Army to store to have um. To have a missile base on Cuba, so so they're in range of the United States of the North American mainland. E even though, even because um, it's sort of a retaliation for the for the Americans having a missile base in Turkey, which puts puts Soviet Russia in rain in range. So um, of their missiles. So um. So the link to the original video will be in the description down below. Please go subscribe to um Time Ghost History. Sorry, I nearly forgot my words then. As usual. Um anyway, without further ado, please check out check out and go subscribe to Time Ghost History. Let's get this up on screen and uh let's get into this and from the end of World War II until 1962, mm. the Western world led by the United States and the communist world led by the Soviet Union mm. are on a continuous path of collision yeah. as the Cold War explodes all over the world. Mm. The two sides face off in direct confrontation in Berlin and mm -hmm. wage proxy conflicts in Czechoslovakia, Albania, Greece, Korea, Laos, Vietnam, and Cuba. And for 13 days in October 1962, the world comes closer to nuclear holocaust than ever before. This is Time Ghost, the Cuban Missile Crisis. Mm. I'm Indy Nidell. The Cuban Missile Crisis does not begin in Cuba. It has its roots in Berlin, Italy, and Turkey. The Oh, I should have added at the beginning that um, if there's anything I do know, I will... I might add I might add my own input whatever I do what little I do know and um I might ask um some curious questions along the way you know if someone in the comments section can answer if I do ask any so Let's carry on. The domestic political situation in the U.S. Mm -hmm. facing the newly elected President John F. Kennedy yep. and in the USSR where Nikita Khrushchev takes power after a harsh four-year struggle following Joseph Stalin's death yeah. in 1953. But leader of the Soviet... I just want to quickly add, from what little I know about Stalin's death was um, apparently because after the purge, 
the guards outside um outside his door they he they heard a loud thud within the room but because they were they didn't want to risk being killed for disturbing Stalin they didn't check up on him and I think he um, I think Stalin died of a stroke but because people were too afraid to check up on him just in case they get per get purged he was left dead for what at least a week I think I'm um, can someone correct me if I'm wrong about that in the comments section, please? Union is not a comfortable position mm. in which to be. He faces an ailing economy, the mm. solution for which the party believes is partly an increased sphere of Excuse global me, control and more client states. He faces wow. demands for reform and liberalization at home, mm. but also the expectation to carry out an aggressive foreign policy to protect Soviet interests. Wow. And an important part of that policy is the nuclear arms race, where the USSR oh, yeah. is way behind the United States. From 1957... The thing is, it's very hard, um... It's very hard to criticize the USSR for their... for their, like, you know, stockpile of uh, nuclear arms when the West are just as bad. I mean... But I think... I think it's like, um... I think in a way for both sides it's kind of like a paranoia. I mean, where, whether it's justified or not is still highly debated. So, so as I said, I'm, I'm not very clued up on this. So, I know the US after World War II has huge, um, has huge um, stockpile of nuclear, nuclear arms, which I don't know what, what the what the situation is nowadays, but I knew just after World War II, their their nuclear stockpile was huge. Into 1962, the number of operational American nuclear warheads goes from around 5,500 okay. to an estimated 25,540. Over that time, the Soviets go from 660 to 3,346. Mm. Enough explosive power to destroy planet Earth several times over, sure. It's still not even close to an actual balance of power. Hmm. After Kennedy's election, this situation will worsen for the Soviets. When President Eisenhower, Kennedy's predecessor, was still in office, the Cuban Revolution had ousted Fulgencio Batista and hmm. put Fidel Castro at the head of a now communist Cuba. Wow. Despite extensive U.S. support, a close ally of the U.S., has fallen to communism. And wow. according to Eisenhower's domino theory, more Latin American states will follow suit. And with revolutionary movements brewing all over the South American continent, that seems a plausible assumption. At mm. first, the US administration chooses to observe and tolerate Castro until he confiscates and nationalizes all American assets on Cuban soil. The US wow. answers with an embargo on Cuban goods and the economic mm. isolation of Cuba. So in February 1960, so Cuba enters into an economic alliance with the USSR. One month later, Eisenhower orders the US military to start training Cuban expats for an armed counter-revolution. Hmm. Now, unlike the Soviet economy, the American economy has been growing vigorously, despite a brief recession in 57 and 58. Okay. The US avoided the destruction that befell the countries in which the Second World War had actually been fought and wow. capitalized on a post-war global economy that desperately needed rebuilding. Hmm. Despite this though, there are deep divisions and challenges on the home front. There is the big fear that communism will spread throughout the world and destroy the American way of life, or even result in another world war. What we oppose well. fundamentally is the aggressive nature of the communist state. Hmm. It's unceasing effort to expand wherever it can, to grow bigger, to take over, to supplant. This deadly impulse toward aggression, we oppose as a continual threat to peace. Also, when the USSR puts the first satellite, Sputnik, into orbit in 1957, the American okay. public wrongfully concludes that they have fallen behind the Soviets in technological development as well, and assumes that the Soviet Union has passed them in the nuclear arms race. There mm. are racial and social injustices that split the electorate, and the young and ambitious senator from Massachusetts named John Fitzgerald Kennedy says he will take on all of these issues at once. 
He wow. runs his presidential campaign in 1960 on a promise of change. He will reform the country to improve equality and liberty for all. He but like all politicians, it probably will never happen, even if he wasn't assassinated. Because if, because even politicians today, they're very slow to, slow to um actually do what's right by the people. Sorry about that rant. He will boost the economy by promoting technological advancement and commerce, and above all. He will be aggressive with the Soviets mm. and close that perceived Hang on, missile. Hang on, gone ad coming. Probably some crap on no Say one's interested. Say hello interesting. to Fitbit Sense. With the Fitbit Premium app and an EDM... Yeah, no one cares about Fitbit. Goodbye. Okay. The choice mm. for you is clear. The choice is between those who sit still and look to the past and between those who look to the future. Between those who recognize that in this deadly age... When we are involved in a close and narrow competition for survival, mm. for the maintenance of freedom around the globe, with our adversaries, the communists, the best that this country can do is none too good. And therefore, I come here today <coughs> and ask your help in moving this country forward again. Now, until the late 1950s, the prime deployment method for nuclear weapons was bombs mm. carried on planes. Rocket development, yeah. though, is creating a new way to deploy them much further away and with less risk of being prevented or intercepted. Wow. Intercontinental ballistic missiles, or ICBMs, can travel the globe in just dozens of minutes. Both the Soviet Union and the U.S. work feverishly mm. to develop functioning ICBM programs. And on both sides, it's proving to be a real challenge. In 1958, the Gaetan Report is issued by the U.S. Air Force, which assumes that Russian ICBM deployment has reached at least 130 units and will increase to close to 1,500 by 1963. Wow. At the same time, an independent CIA report concludes that the USSR has about 10 deployable ICBMs. In reality, the Soviets have four, of which wow. two are untested prototypes, while the U.S. has a couple dozen. By 1962, the United States has 177 ICBMs. The Soviet Union still has fewer than 40. The mm. Eisenhower administration is well aware that the Gaetan report is erroneous and even suspects that the CIA report is an overestimation. Mm. But political opponents of that administration leak the report, and it's seized upon by Kennedy in his presidential campaign. So I think someone said in another historical video, I can't remember which one, but... Is don't un is never to underestimate the power of propaganda, no matter who it's from. Kennedy hits the campaign trail, promising to close <coughs> the missile gap created mm. by the Eisenhower administration's inaction in the arms race. Despite wow. being repeatedly informed about the actual situation, mm. Kennedy continues this rhetoric. Finally, wow. in July 1960, Eisenhower summons both Kennedy and his running mate Lyndon Johnson to the White House and informs them personally of the actual situation. It is to no avail. Hmm. Well, back on the campaign trail, Kennedy continues to slam Eisenhower for allowing the missile gap to arise. He even goes so far as to claim that he himself discovered the gap and coined the phrase. Wow. Kennedy's opponent, Richard Nixon, attacks Kennedy as being weak on fighting communism and, and too young to shoulder the challenges of the Cold War. Wow. We know the right way, offered a way which would have lost us our friends in Latin America, the tremendous outrage that they exploded with once he made that very silly and foolish and immature suggestion of his that we ought to intervene directly in Cuba. Now, of course, he's jumped off of it. But let me just say one thing with regard to that. Can America, in this time, afford a well-intentioned man, but a man who, frankly, doesn't know the situation and who says one thing today and another thing tomorrow? That kind of a man, Mr. Khrushchev, will make mincemeat of. That's what I'm talking about. Wow. Kennedy counters Same by way. upping the anti-communist rhetoric and continuing mm. his claims about the non-existent missile gap. As the election approaches, mm. the candidates are neck and neck. Kennedy barely ekes out the win with a margin of the popular vote of 0.17%, carrying close. four fewer states than Nixon, but winning 303 votes of the Electoral College. Wow. Allegations of voter fraud and irregularities follow, and the bitter close campaign like every Kennedy politician. with 
a less than optimal amount of popular support. We now know that Ken. So basically, like every every elec electoral campaign. So basically, Nixon's a really sore loser. As I said, I'm not very clued up on U.S. president, so please don't judge me too harshly. But why do I bother even saying that? Kennedy and hmm. his brother, soon to be Attorney General Robert Kennedy, believed in a dialogue with the Soviets, but harsh measures against Cuba. And even before Kennedy okay. took office, they opened a direct back-channel communication line to the Soviet Union through the spy Georgi Bolshakov, a highly hmm. positioned Russian intelligence operative with direct access to Khrushchev. Now, this contact was reported to the FBI and CIA hmm. and was never covert. But as the situation between the superpowers deteriorates, it soon becomes a vital part of the regular intelligence and diplomatic operations of the Kennedy administration. And Kennedy has made public promises that he now needs to keep. Mm. One of his early actions as president will be to continue the planned covert invasion of Cuba already put in motion by Eisenhower. In April 1961, three months after taking office, he orders the invasion that will soon be known as the Bay of Pigs invasion. Mm -hmm. On April 17th, close to 1,500 CIA-trained Cuban exiles descend on Cuba's Bay of Pigs, supported by eight B-26 bombers and five supply ships. Wow. Facing them are 25,000 soldiers, 200,000 militia, and 9,000 police. And it does not take long before mm. the invasion becomes a fiasco, mm. and a very public fiasco. The reaction and condemnation by Cuba and the Soviet Union are swift and angry. And in the following months, Bobby Kennedy will meet Bolshakov a total of 19 times in order to try to patch up relations to little avail. Mm. The Kennedy administration continues to look for ways to overthrow or undermine the Castro government, though. But despite the situation in Cuba, a summit between Kennedy and Khrushchev goes ahead in June. The wow. main topic on the agenda is Berlin. And both parties walk away satisfied they have prevailed, while in actual fact they have achieved nothing. Hmm. Days later, Kennedy it's announces an increase politics. in the U.S. armed forces by over 20% to protect the world from the USSR. He also specifically wow. increases the troops deployed to Berlin. Hmm. Khrushchev, who is on vacation on the Black Sea at the time, is reportedly furious, but that is only the beginning of his problems. Hmm. That same month, the U.S. starts deploying mid-range ballistic missiles in Italy. Wow. Contrast to ICBMs, MRBMs do exist in large amounts. These missiles now allow the U.S. to strike at the Russian heartland within minutes of an outbreak of war. More MRBMs are positioned in NATO ally Turkey, even closer to Russia. Kennedy is delivering on his promise to close that imagine. Yeah, bearing in mind from what what I from what I remember hearing, um, Russia and Turkey have been at each other's necks for centuries. So it's kind of no surprise that that the Soviet or the Soviets are kind of angry that you know they're using they're using Turkey as a bait using Tur parts of Turkey as a missile base a generic missile gap but to do this quickly he and his secretary of defense Robert McNamara must rely on existing and tested missile technology yeah and the only missiles sensible... that exist in large enough amounts are the PGM-19 Jupiter missiles Developed in 1954 and mm. produced from 1956, these are already dated by 1961, but more importantly, they stand above the ground. Mm. So they can easily be spotted and destroyed by airstrikes. Wow. So they're fairly useless as defensive weapons mm. and only really good for a first strike. It does not take long for the USSR to find out what's going on, and Khrushchev's frustration and fury continue to grow. Mm. The next challenge comes when East Germany closes the border between East and West Berlin to the passage of civilians in order to stop the brain bleed of East German academicians, technicians, and engineers leaving in droves through the open border. Wow. Kennedy responds by calling in 148,000 reserves to potentially defend Berlin. Wow. In October, after a few incidents where army vehicles are not allowed to cross the border, 
Kennedy's special envoy to Berlin, retired General Lucius Clay, decides to test the borders to see that U.S. Army vehicles still have, in fact, free passage over that border. The test vehicle passes through. However, to be safe, the Americans backed up the test by parking a few tanks on their side of the border. Hmm. The USSR also parked tanks on its own side. When the Americans see that everything is normal, they call their tanks back. But the Soviets misunderstand this move and think that they're only retreating because of them. So they wow. roll into Friedrichstrasse towards Checkpoint Charlie, the main American army border crossing. The American tanks quickly turn around and take up aggressive positions on their side of the border. So there they stand, fewer than 80 meters apart for the next 48 hours. You can see how that can turn nasty in a hurry if one thing went wrong. Formula E turns to Valencia, a city named for its strength and valor. One arena. EVs are stupid. So anyway. No, but it does... Sorry, I know my rant before was a bit dumb, but I'm, I'm just... I just want to say that it kind of... I'm glad that it showed this footage because, as Indy said, one one wrong move from either side can turn into a, hu a huge vol how sit how volatile the situation is. One wrong move from either side could could be an absolute massacre and an extreme. Well, it's going to be extremely bad for both sides, really. Kennedy and Khrushchev negotiate who will pull back first. Mm. In the end, they agree the Soviets should pull back five meters first, wow. then the Americans, and so on in steps. Mm. Although somewhat comical in nature, the incident has serious implications as both sides walk away with the impression yeah. that the other side is ready to go to war over Berlin. Mm. Both Khrushchev and JFK are actually recorded at the time saying they don't care that much for the fate of Berlin, despite making public statements to the contrary. Wow. That does not really matter, though, as mm. the allies of both countries care very much about Berlin, so the USSR and the US are left with little choice. Meanwhile, the pressure on Khrushchev to do something about the overwhelming US nuclear superiority is mounting. By May 1962, he has a plan. He asks Fidel Castro to allow him to do the same thing the U.S. did in Turkey and Italy. Ah, here Put we a go. few MRBMs in their front yard. Mm. Castro reluctantly agrees, and the construction of missile sites begins. Despite all of this, during the summer of 1962, Kennedy is still under attack for being too soft on communism and the Soviet Union. Mm. So at the White House press conferences on September 4th and September 13th, he publicly warns Cuba and the USSR that the United States will not tolerate any nuclear buildup on Cuba and will wow. take forceful actions to prevent it. He will go on record as regretting this warning when, mm. on October 16, 1962, American spy planes discover the missile sites and the 13 most dangerous days in human history begin. Not kidding about that. The 13 yeah, most imagine. dangerous days in our history. If you'd like to see some other dark days when the future was being decided, you can click right here for our video on the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact just before World War II broke out. It is the Time Ghost Army that in these dark times in 2020 finances our programming, so please join us at patreon.com or timeghost.tv. See you next time. And that'll do it. This has been another interesting video from Time Ghost History, which has been, again, brilliantly brilliantly hosted by uh, by Indy Nidell so um but yeah not a lot I can add to this but all I can say is that I couldn't say it properly earlier in the video but um it kind of just shows that even though both sides didn't really care for Berlin it kind of showed how volatile the situation is between the US and the USSR so and bearing in mind, parts of Berlin were not just controlled by the U.S. and the Soviets. There was also Britain.
parts of Berlin that were run by Britain and France so so the divide in Berlin was volatile and um, and of course you got the battle against communism which whether you like it or whether it's good or not is still highly debatable but but I I don't know much about it anyway so um yeah and there's and of course the poli the the pressure and the politics behind it as well and and again I pro I remember saying in the first the first episode of this series that I reacted to that both with both sides it's both tit for tat so it's got to go back and forth where pressure is mounting on both both sides to um to sort out the situation about you know commun communism versus capitalism and um and the situation regarding Cuba so um so anyway um if you like this reaction, please like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you in the